In this tutorial, the best workflow for converting 2D AutoCAD drawings into 3D Revit models. Hi, my name is Serge and welcome to Power Surge, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. Welcome back. The best way to import drawings that you are using to trace off is to import directly into the 3D view. But first, we need to set up the 3D view. Toggle the Viz Graphics and find the Site Category. Then turn on the Internal Origin. Then repeat the Import Link process. Click on the drawing to be imported and notice the Current View Only checkbox is greyed out. Instead, you are now placing directly at a level, in this case, level 0. The project contains multiple levels, as shown. And now, to import the corresponding levels, simply toggle the Place At entry for each of the associated drawing files. So, I have imported two drawings now, each on a different level. The key here was that I had to create the levels in Revit first. Noticeably, the imports have many visible layers. When efficiency is the goal, this can be problematic. There are a few different ways to turn off the unwanted layers. But remember, I now have two separate imports, so whatever method you typically use may not be the best here. This is what I recommend. Open the Viz Graphics and move over to the Imported Categories tab. Here, both imports are accessible. Click on the Expand All button to expose all of the layers of each import. Following on, select only the layers you want visible. Here I choose Wall A and Wall I, and I do this for each import instance. Once selected, click on the Invert button here and then click back into the table anywhere. This deselects anything except the layers I want on. To finalize, tick the import header for each instance. And then apply, and then OK. As displayed on screen, only the selected layers are visible and this makes it more efficient to trace from. You can also see that the levels are confined within this zone, which will make it difficult to visualize the placement of the 3D elements. To fix this, switch to a floor plan view, ideally a working view, and then from here move up to the view tab and click on the scope box button. Now draw a box, ensuring that it encloses the drawing reference. Give the scope box an appropriate name, and then switch back to the 3D view, where the scope box will now also be visible. Use the view cube to visualize the model in elevation and drag the bottom plane of the scope box so that it extends beyond the bottom level. Then flick back to the isometric view and select all of the levels. With those selected, apply the scope box from the properties palette. I can now start to add the wall elements. Zooming in closer will ensure accuracy. I also find that it helps to hide any references that I am not using at this point. These can be hidden temporarily. Now from the ribbon, I can select the wall type that I want to use. 
and typically users will snap to the center line of the drawing reference and click a second time to finalize the placement. A more efficient way will be to use the pick lines tool and then to use the options bar which is this zone here to set preferences. Typically this method alternates between the finish face, exterior or interior and you can also predetermine a height and then on the drawing reference select the finish face line. As you can see Revit still projects the center line reference but now the wall is placed with just one click instead of two and in addition the wall is set to the correct height constraint. It seems simple, but working in this way, you can easily model 20% faster. I will demonstrate this quickly by building up this area. Step one was to select the pick lines tool. Step two is setting the preferences on the options bar. Step three is selecting the CAD reference and notice here the wall projection is dependent on the CAD reference line length. So improved line selection will improve your speed even more. Step four is to zoom in for accuracy. Now let's pause here for a moment. As shown on screen, there are many lines close together. The colors are helpful for identification. In my case, I want the finished face. To hide the other lines, I click on the CAD reference and then from the ribbon, I can query. This will identify the layer and enable the user to delete or hide the layer in view. I am now left with the yellow wall finish outline and yellow can be hard to see so I can quickly override the graphics by right clicking on the mouse. Then select an appropriate color. Here I will go with the default gray. And now the reference is much clearer. I can switch wall types and repeat the process. With the four external walls modeled, I can use the trim tool to join these together. To complete the walls, I toggle the view cube so that I can see all of the walls at the same time. I like to place all vertical walls first and then to work back around and place the horizontal segments. Once that is done, use all of the trim options to join the walls together. Now I will quickly show you how to add ceilings. The ceiling tool in Revit includes an automatic ceiling function, which everyone tries, but then they get this result. It doesn't work and they revert back to sketching a boundary. Stop, don't do that. It doesn't work because the walls need to be room bounding. Now let's try that again.
and there you have it, ceilings done in 10 seconds, compared to sketching a boundary for each. That's a huge time buster. So we have the walls and the ceilings, and now for the floors. The downside is that floors don't have an auto option like the ceilings, but don't be tempted to sketch each boundary. Here is another helpful hack, but first I will set up the view so that it's easier to work with. Here I'm using a view template to instantly revise the graphics to some predetermined settings. If you don't already use view templates, then I highly recommend it. In this view, the ceilings are in bold and the model is in wireframe so that I can see all of the walls at once. Noticeably, if I select one of the ceilings and edit its boundary, the boundary is aligned to the foot of the perimeter walls, just like a floor. So I can select it and copy this to the clipboard. Then exit sketch mode. And now simply use the paste aligned function to paste the boundary into the exact same position. And there it is in green. Notice also the amount of lines in the boundary and think about how long it would take you to sketch that using the conventional method. Repeat this until all boundaries are copied. And once done, click and isolate the boundaries. Then from the architecture tab and the floor tool, select the floor type to be used. And just like we did for the walls, select the pick lines tool. But this time there is one small difference. Drag the mouse so that it highlights one segment, but don't click. Instead, hit tab on the keyboard to instantly select the whole boundary. Then while still in sketch mode, select the remaining boundaries. Then finish the sketch and job done. Floors quickly modelled in considerably less clicks. Try it yourself and let me know in the comments how you get on. Thanks so much for watching. If this video was useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future content and I will see you in the next video.